For all my Krusty Commando fans, we've got a big problem. It's missing. For those of you wanting to know how to fix a misfire, stick around. P0201, problems, troubleshooting, solution, tools, all the goods, coming your way. Well, if you're new here, I have a 1972 Jeep Commando that I recently put a straight six out of Jeep Cherokee in. I took it for its first test drive, and when I got back, I had a check engine light. Yeah, that sucks. What that check engine code was, was a P0201, and that means I have a misfire on the first cylinder in this vehicle. Now, if you came to watch this, it's probably because you want to know how to diagnose a P0201. 0201, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, depending on which cylinder is missing. And so we're about to dive into that and show you how to solve an engine misfire on your Jeep. So to check your check engine code, what you're going to need to do is get you a code reader like this. There's a piece up under here. You're going to plug this in, turn the key in the accessory position, and then you'll pull up your codes, however your device says, and you'll see here a code P2. Zero one here. Check it out. Right there. P zero two zero one cylinder one injector A circuit generic. Now let's talk about how to fix said problem. When it came to trying to figure this out, the first thing I suspected was a bad fuel injector. When I got the Jeep, it had a number of fuel injectors already changed, some spare sitting in the seat, and I was like, oh. Clearly, it must be an injector. So to test the injectors, I actually just moved the injector from one to two and to see if the misfire would then move from cylinder one to two. That seemed the easiest way to go. I would recommend that would be where you would start as well, because it's really simple. I'll leave a link to a video below um, where you'll be able to see how to move the injector from one to the other. It's just a few 10 millimeter bolts. It's really quick to get that injector moved from cylinder one to two or whatever cylinder you're having issues with. After that, I realized, okay, the injector's good. Let's move on to the next step. The next step was to make sure that I had power to that injector wire. And to do that, I used a voltmeter. Let me show you what that looks like. It looks a lot like this. It actually looks exactly like this. You're just gonna move it to the 20 volts and then you're gonna find the injector that is missing. It's gonna have two wires on it and the wires will actually be a little bit different color. I've already changed the plug to this because I've gone through all the diagnostic, but I wanted to go ahead and film it post so to help you know other people that needed to find this information. And so what I'm gonna do is that the red here should actually have 12 volts when it's running. And so I can take that and then plug that in there and then just ground it out somewhere on the frame. And you'll see right now it's at zero volts because it's not running. So I'm gonna go start the Jeep and I'll be right back so we can test to see if this has voltage. As you can see, hopefully, I don't know if you'll be able to hear me, but you'll see here, we're sitting right at 14 volts. So I know it has voltage, so that's not the problem. Confirming that I've got 14 volts here when it's running, that means that's not what's causing my misfire on cylinder one. For those of you that aren't familiar with the way this process works, this injector is actually pulsed with a ground. So the ECU controls a ground that makes the injector pulse. It provides that power, it closes that circuit. With that in mind, you know you've got voltage here and all of these are actually run off of the same common hot. And so with that, there's another piece that I was told to check. It's the auto shut off something over here. I'm actually gonna leave a link as well to the old forum page that helped me walk through almost all of this. Um, I didn't find any good YouTube videos, but that forum was super helpful. So now that I know I've got voltage here, the next thing I wanna do is actually check continuity here on the ground. And so you're gonna use that same voltmeter here. You're gonna move it to ohms, which would be over here. So you're gonna move that to the ohms. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and check the resistance from the ECM back to this ground to make sure that there's no short in that ground wire between the two. And with that, you're gonna be looking for 0.0 to 0.3 resistance. So no resistance between that wire, which means there's no short. Here is what the wiring diagram looks like for the pins at the ECM. So pause if you need to go through, relook at that to check for continuity. That wiring diagrams for a 2000 Jeep Cherokee, yours might be a little bit different. Your ECM is actually going to be located up on the firewall. I'll show you what that looks like. It looks something like this. Okay, 
So now if you've done through all of these steps, we've checked for voltage at this plug, we've checked for continuity with the ground, we've checked the injectors, we've made sure that we have good fuel pressure, we've looked at pretty much everything. The only other thing that we want to check as well before we get any further into this process is the actual plugs here. So these are already replaced, but what had caused my issue was actually that the wire cover here had been worked off and these two wires actually touched at some point and shorted out the ECM. I know that because I had continuity. I could see that short here. So that meant, and I checked all those other things that we've gone through today. So that meant the ECM was bad. To make sure that, that didn't happen again, I went ahead and ordered these plugs, spliced them in. That's really straightforward. If you have questions about it, I can leave some links to videos below. You know, just leave a comment, but it's really easy. You just cut and splice the wires, replace them, and then they'll plug in. I'll leave a link to these plugs that I used because they seem really good quality, had no issues with them, put a hundred miles or so on it so far. Doing all that diagnostic, I now know that it was the ECM. So I ordered a new ECM, I'll leave the link to that. I think it was computer exchange or something like that. I'll leave a link to where I ordered it from. Great deal, provide the VIN, a couple other details. They'll send you the new computer, you swap it out, send it back. They said it had a lifetime warranty, so I'm happy about that. And as soon as I replace the ECM, everything's working on the Jeep. And there you go, guys. Hopefully that helps you solve your misfire issue with the P0201, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And uh, if you liked it, please like, subscribe, leave some comments below if there was something I might have missed that was helpful for you when you went to diagnose. Till next time, guys.